No, yeah. I'll make sure of that. <laughs> Good. January 13th, 2020, the Libertarian Party of Colorado State Board of Directors meeting will now come to order. I'll go ahead and get started with reading and approving of the agenda. Does everybody have that up in front of them right now? And does anyone think there are any changes that need to be made? Um, I have a hard time bringing it up. Did the order of or the plan of business get added for? Uh, Talking about the convention and making sure we're going to uh, help candidates with their paperwork. Um, I do see a lot of candidate stuff here on the agenda for that. Okay. And I see that under the convention committee section under new business. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have anything they want to bring up? That's okay, man. All right. Um, I would say the typical affiliates report and LNC report is missing. I would say let's just add that in there, give them normal time as usual. Anyone object to that addition? No. All right. Did you say the LNC report's missing? Yeah. Well, it's not the on the agenda. Yeah, the section's missing where it oh. usually goes. <coughs> and you said that was Karen Ann just dialed in? Victoria's on the line, too. Oh, Victoria? Yeah, oh, that's she's watching three minutes today. each. Uh, <laughs> Anything else need to get on this agenda? <coughs> All right, I'd like to motion to go ahead and approve the agenda. Second. All right, any opposed? Hearing none, moving forward, the agenda is approved. We're going to read, in a, uh, next we're going to introduction of guests. And at this point, we will invite guests and the general public to be heard. You'll have three minutes each, and whoever would like to go first may do so.
Anybody else? Seeing nobody else who wishes to come forward, we're going to move right ahead into affiliates reports. We're going to go in roughly alphabetical order, starting with Arapahoe County. Okay. Um, Kat Martin, Vice Chair of Arapahoe County. Um, we have our monthly Arapahoe Happy Hour uh, tomorrow night on the corner of Chambers and Arapahoe. Um, no, Alameda. Um, and it's the Rancho Allegre, and we're just going to have a general Liberty Hangout. Uh, we don't have a speaker this month, so we encourage you to join us and join the discussion on Liberty. Six o'clock. Six o'clock, Rancho Allegre. And a Taco Tuesday deal. Wonderful place for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, we're going to move into, I see Denver is here. Kyle, would you like to say anything? Kyle Curry, Chair of Denver. Um, so we actually just uh, filed the paperwork with Tracer to, um, so I guess we're back to affiliate now. Yeah. Uh, we've got our first annual meeting where we'll be holding our elections on uh, January 21st. That's next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at Dive In. We'd love some board members to show up. What, time, what day did you say that was? Uh, 6.30 on the 21st. Cool. All right. Another affiliate I see here is El Paso. Uh, John Gerson, uh, El Paso Treasurer. <clears throat> We're having a, our uh, member meeting Thursday. And it's going to be, uh, the topic is going to be uh, football elections. Going state convention, and then Saturday is our uh, annual convention where we elect our candidates and such. Uh, but that's going to be a tilted kill. You guys know where it is. It's on I said I 25 and Woodman in Colorado Springs, pretty much. And our member meeting is a part of the pizza on Pine Avenue in Colorado Springs. What did I forget? I think that's it. I do not have any information on your annual meeting. Uh oh. I'd be a little late now, huh? Well, we can still put it on the website. If you send it to <coughs> okay. It reduces the number of voters. Voter suppression. All right. And the next one I see here is uh, Jefferson. Hi, everybody. I'm Ross Chur of the Libertarian Party of Jefferson County. Um, this month we have a uh, really big deal. Our guest speaker, Ray Haynes, senator from California, will be there and we'll have a debate on the electoral college versus the popular vote. So it'll be pretty big. It'll actually be live streaming on Facebook if you can't make it. Um, but it's at the um, Holiday Lanes in Lakewood. So it's not too far away, pretty easy to get to. And uh, that should be really interesting. I'm sure Senator Haynes will be a pretty polished debater. And uh, it would be interesting to pick his brain. He actually is uh, for the popular vote, which is, seems astounding to me. <laughs> so <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how that, it might be because he's from California, but we'll have to figure that out. Of course. <laughs> 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 yeah, so what day was that again? Um, that's a Thursday. Uh, the date? Oh, the, um, <coughs> 16th? Yeah, 16th. Cool. Excellent. All right. Uh, Pueblo County? Um, as always, we hold our meetings the third Tuesday of the month at 6.30. So ours will be at, on January 21st, Senate Bar and Grill, downtown Pueblo. Uh, this month, um, I'm going to be out of town, as is John Kyle. But luckily, we've grown enough to where we have one of our members agreed to lead the meeting for us. Um, so it's really nice. His passion is fiscal responsibility going on in the Pueblo West Metro District. And so he's going to make that topic of discussion. And he's, he's been collecting information for quite a long time and been a thorn in their side in the local newspaper. So I'm sure he's going to hold a, a great meeting. And uh, I'll find out about how it went when I get back and uh, report back. Excellent. Thanks, Scott. All right. I don't see any other affiliates here, so we're going to move right along. 
go into LNC report. Uh, Karen Ann Harlos, that's you. Karen Ann, you still with us? She is. Karen Ann, you're muted. Oh, unmuted. Yeah, I didn't know my mic. My mic was off. Um, I had submitted a pretty extensive report. I just wanted to show up to see if there was any questions because there was, you know, kind of that weird situation with that felon member issue, and I didn't know if anyone was going to have a, a, any questions or not. But everything's in my report. Excellent. Anybody have any questions for Karen Ann Harless from the board? All right, hearing none, we'll move on. Thank you, Karen Ann. All right, next we're going to read and approve the minutes from the December 2019 <coughs> meeting. Has everyone gotten a chance to look at those? All right, hearing no objection. I would like to go ahead and move to approve the minutes from December 2019. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any objections? Hearing none from the board, we're going to move right along into reading the board officer reports. All right. Board members will have five minutes each, starting with the chairman. I have nothing to add to the chairman's report. David, do you have anything to add? Um, I'm here for um, the chair, Madam Victoria. She is in Paris right now. Her son is having an art show at a gallery in Paris. So wow. that's kind of cool. Right. <laughs> so uh, that's why she is not here, and I'm here uh, as her proxy, but I don't have anything other to say than that. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, for the vice chairman report, I have nothing to add to my report. Moving into treasurer. Uh, nothing to add. Excellent. All right. Fundraising. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Uh oh. Looks like we're getting a pretty good pot. Don't, don't talk about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is there something more effective we could do as far as uh, outreach, maybe? You know? I do have booth opportunities listed in my report that I submitted too late to show up online. But okay. Yeah. So we'll hear about that. Yeah, we'll hear about that. Was, uh, did you have a reserve for the newsletter this month? Uh, Mr. Cole Branson, wait to be oh. called on, please. We have someone who wishes to be called on from the audience. Does the board object? Uh, Hearing none, go ahead. In the discussion as to the treasurer and this uh, pot of gold that suddenly is sitting in accounts, there will be uh, a fairly substantial bill coming for newsletters, which are at the press today. will be coming off the press tomorrow and will be in the mail no later than Wednesday. We hope to have copies to bring tonight, but we uh, got a little delayed waiting on some late. This project, but I don't think we have that on the agenda right now. Anything else to add, John? Mm -hmm. All right, moving on next. Fundraising. Angela, are you still with us? Yes, I have nothing to add. Perfect. All right, campaigns, Mr. Lopez. Um, I have nothing currently to add to that report. Uh, John sent me a list of. Um, Offices are up for election. Uh, we also have a working idea uh, that John likes to present. So, if you're ready. Yeah, do we want to do that now or during the campaign committee? Oh. Or does it matter? Either way, it's um, the same. Got five, <laughs> five minutes. I think we've got a. I think we've got a campaign committee spot for you here. Because it might take more yeah, than five minutes. Absolutely. I think it'll take okay. more than five minutes, maybe. Yeah, we'll let you go ahead and do it now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of the newsletter, it was a great theme this, this month in that uh, our chairman's comments were focused on running for office. We're getting into the 2020 season. 
one of our stated goals at our at our strategic planning session was we want to get a libertarian candidate in every state legislature spot. That's one of our goals. And so that was a great lead in from the chairman. Um, the fact that you can make a difference. It's, it's very frustrating being a libertarian candidate, but then you see this conversation start to change. You see uh, the the article that was in there from uh, um, Karen Ann about Wayne's efforts and his successes uh, that he had locally. Um, so we have to start doing that now. We have to start trying to find candidates. And we as a board have agreed that's our goal. And so now I'm going to put the board on the spot by saying, Michael and I and whoever else we can get to join the campaigns committee, uh, uh, we want us to lead by example. So if we can't find a candidate in your district, I'm going to go around to each one of you and ask for your commitment that you'll at least name down for that spot. Uh, I have John Hearsman in House District 16. Okay. Uh, I will commit to House District 46. Victoria said she would commit to House District 39. Uh, Kyle, would you uh, commit to House District 6? Is that your district? Uh, yeah, I'll vote. Yeah, as long as I don't move out of my district. All right, we will not make you break the law. <laughs> um, Kat, House District 42? Uh, uh, I'm uh, actually John? running for county commissioner. Okay, and yep. you're running for? RT District, yeah. Okay. But you can put me down for the campaigns committee because I've been working with some candidates and I would love to get them in touch with the committee. Awesome. Uh, let's see, Adam, House District 53, I believe? Uh, I don't know if I have issues with my employer, but if I do not, if I don't, okay. yeah. All right, we'll put you on a contingency. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Angela, House District 57? Yeah, or Senate District, whichever one would need filling. Okay, Stacy, House District 60? Skip 56. Yes, sir. <laughs> we know who's got that. <sighs> you know my name now? <laughs> you know what's amazing is none of us overlap. <laughs> We're all in a different district. <laughs> Michelle's also doing Senate 29. 29. Michelle. Kevin. Uh, Michael Lopez, House District 64. Yeah. David, House District 2. Um, John, we have a person for 64 right now until you guys got that. Yeah. This is only if we can't find somebody. We're going to try to find people outside the board because obviously we want to have, well, one, we don't want to monopolize the spots. So if we find somebody else, then you're off the hook. Um, this is just a backup plan. Yeah. David, House District 2. Um, all right. Well, while you're deciding, David, we are coming up on time. How much more time do you need, John? Because I'll extend for that. Um, one minute. Okay. Uh, motion to extend the campaign <coughs> committee's report time by one minute. Second. All right. Anybody object? Hearing none of that, please continue. Okay. Uh, Mike Spaulding House District 25. Are you sure it's up this year? Uh, every house district is. Oh, okay. It's only the Senate districts that aren't. Some of, some of them aren't. Um, David, maybe. Um, <coughs> Kevin got you. Mike got you. DK, I, oh, I didn't get yours down. If I run, it will probably be for something else. Okay. Yeah. All right. DKs are in just keep John. He gets a pass. <laughs> Come on. Well, district pass. attorney. No one yeah. gets off the. <laughs> um, and uh, John Kyle uh, committed to House District 47. Did I miss anybody in the uh, oh, uh, Ross? Okay. Yeah, he's already got a campaign. So you already spoke before. Did I miss anybody? What? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's just the no. name. Just the name. Yeah, this online. is just. That's all it is. What? This is just. Even, I'm in just House District our, Four. Just putting our name down. Yeah. You, would you want to be a paper candidate? Yeah, sure. Okay. You're the best, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Paper candidates are easy. Thank yeah. you, and I encourage you to get yourself off the hook by. Uh, by recruiting a candidate to run in your house district. That's or run your own campaign. <laughs> Thank you. All right, excellent. Thank you so much, campaigns. Thank Wonderful job. And for those who haven't looked at it yet, definitely check out the campaigns report that he submitted. It's beautiful. All right. We
We've got outreach next. Um, I definitely missed the deadline, so it's not online. I will read mine. I have come up with some outreach booth opportunities coming up over the next three or four months, and I would like to commit to doing one or two every month. In February, we have a gun show in Loveland coming up on February 8th and 9th. This is the only one we would need to vote for funding today. Everything else can be voted at the next meeting. Um, and that booth cost is $79.50. Um, the next one would be Colorado Springs Tanner Gun Show from February 22nd to 23rd. And the way they do it, they like to have their applications and payment only two weeks in advance. Um, so we could vote on that one at the next meeting and then coming up into March there's frozen dead guy days up in Netherland um, the Denver Tanner gun show and then in April I've got a Pueblo Tanner gun show and then in May and June um, there's a rifle rendezvous festival in May and then in June Denver Pride Fest I did look into Cinco de Mayo and it doesn't look like they're doing that this year oh. if they are it's not anywhere on the internet okay well they sent a notice to me because I used to do some Okay. And um, I guess I need to forward that to you. All right, yeah, if you would forward that to me, because I, I Googled it knowing that we had done it last year, and I couldn't find anything online from Denver about them putting it on, and there were no dates marked off or anything, so. Well, they might automatically send those out, right? Okay. Right, yes. Questions? Question? Um, is the um, Cinco de Mayo the same as this year? Um, I also could not find anything on that. And I, I assume <coughs> that more of the summertime festivals will be putting their information out in the next couple of months, it being the beginning of the year. A lot of the summertime festivals don't have anything online about them yet. Well, well I, I think I, I think the People's Fair usually got started in December or so. Yeah, yeah I, 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 did, I did Google the People's Fair, and the only articles I could find were that it was canceled in 2019, and I could not find any new information about a People's Fair in 2020. Wow. Okay. And then Cinco de Mayo, they sent me one because they have early bird pricing right now. Okay. And it goes up a hundred bucks. Yeah. If you would, if you would forward the Cinco de Mayo okay. to me, because I, that one didn't pop up in my emails, there were some others that. And that's something we need to vote on this meeting in order to get the right. We'll just do it via email. If it, we don't know if it exists now, since you don't yeah. find it. So. <coughs> Yeah, the only, the only thing that if we want to do on February 8th and 9th in Loveland would be the $79.50 for the booth that weekend. How many people? Um, it's, <clears throat> I know that they have room for about 300 booths, and I don't know exactly how, exactly how many people show up. That wasn't listed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if just yes. one of them becomes a libertarian. Mm -hmm. um, are you aware that there's a list of county fairs on our website? On the LD Colorado website? Yes. Um, I was not aware of that. Okay. It, it might be on the uh, knowledge base. So ldcolorado.org slash KB. definitely look into that. I've been um, using a Colorado Festivals and Fairs dot com and it's it's been listing literally everything I've ever heard of. Okay. So all right. Yeah, but I'll look to see what we have on the website as well for future. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, um, I would like to make a motion to expend seventy nine fifty for the Loveland gun show February eighth and ninth. We have a motion on the table to spend $79.50 for the Loveland Gun Show in February. And we have a second. Moving to discussion. I do have a question. Yes. Um, how many volunteers are you going to need for this? Um, I would need probably seven or eight volunteers because it's two days from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then on Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And with the database, I was planning on doing phone banking for area to get volunteers since we don't have a, um, an active affiliate in the area. Okay. Um, do you have access to the LP Co page as an admin yet? Um, I have access to the database. I don't have any like website editing access. Uh, do you have access to the Facebook page is what I meant to ask? Yes. Okay, I do. Cool. Uh, yeah, I can do volunteer call-outs on awesome. Facebook as well. 
and then one more unrelated question. Um, you know where to put your reports in the shared drive, right? I do now. Cool. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> All right, no further questions for me. Any other further questions? We've got John, then we got Mike next. How much money do we have in the treasury? Oh, no. <laughs> we have enough to fund all of these. Well, yeah. uh, let's see. And before we do go on, we did have time just expire, so I'll motion to extend us for another two minutes. Second. All right, excellent. Do I have any objections? Very done. We're extending for two minutes. John, go ahead and continue. Uh, $21,683.29. That's awful close. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really breaking the bank here. $5,500 is going to the, to the hotel uh, right before the convention. And all the convention expenses haven't come through. I mean, we got the hotel charges, it's pretty much all we've seen so far, but there's going to be lots of little stuff that's going to pile up. We haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I didn't think there would be close, but it's kind of the one that we're at. I, so, do you need any other funds, like for literature or for. I have everything that is in Kevin's trailer, and I also went through, started organizing, and have an entire booth worth of stuff in my garage, too. So, yeah, we got plenty of outreach materials. All right. Uh, do we have any further discussion? Oh, we do have somebody who would like to speak from the audience that would require approval from the board. Anybody object? Nope. Mr. Nope. Golden Branson, be quick, please. Uh, I've offered to be her number one uh, uh, volunteer, and uh, it's not Kevin's trailer, it's John's trailer. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> long story. <laughs> uh, it would really be nice, and I don't know if you maybe work this out somehow with fundraising, or basically think we're all fundraisers, and should, if uh, you know, somebody could provide just go to the lp.org site and buy 100 bumper stickers and donate them to the party here as part of our outreach trip. Uh, buttons, we can always use buttons. And those, those are things that people will walk by them and pick one up and you know, say, hey, you know, there ain't no free lunch and you get a bucket and give them a bucket. So uh, that's all. All right, we're down to 10 seconds left. I would like to extend by one minute and not a minute more, please. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Does anyone object? There are no objections. We're extending for one minute. John Bakewell. Uh, question for Kevin or request. Uh, can you shoot out an email to the board or to a widespread audience? What kind of materials you're looking for? Because that way you don't get, when we go to buy something for the, uh, for the really outreach. Just, just think of walking down. Buttons there and bumper and stickers, and things best. that are okay yeah. for children to grab, because like the legalized cocaine buttons, I've had parents get mad at me for like <laughs> having those on the table. Uh, okay. Don't really need those. Yeah. Things that are okay for kids to grab, stickers, buttons. But yeah. yeah. Okay. You get right. those rolls of stickers. Kevin, thank you. I'd like to bring us back here. We've got 30 seconds to approve a motion to spend $79.50 to get Lexi the money for the booth that she wants. At this point, do I hear any objections? Seeing none. Oh, do you have an objection, John? Not an objection. I, uh, does that include insurance? It's usually the $50 or so insurance that goes along with these booths. Can we amend that to approve hundred and thirty dollars just in case I said this. <laughs> all right we have an amendment to amend the motion to spend hundred and thirty dollars to cover incidentals in the event 7950 doesn't do it and we have a second, second. Is there any objections hearing none that passes you have been allocated hundred and thirty dollars to get your booth Lexi thank you set up a Facebook event send me a reminder and I will see if I can fit it in and if I can fit it in and cats available we'll both go awesome thank you if cat wants to of course uh -huh. yeah, here. She already volunteered if she had I already volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. We've got outreach resolved. David, last question. Um, would you send me information for the um, events page? Yes. Thank you. Perfection. All right. Moving on to affiliates. Do we have Steve Gallant anywhere on the call? No, I'm proxy. Ah, uh, yes. No additions. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, proxy Steve. <laughs> All right, next we've got legislative. Do we have Michael Stapleton anywhere on the call? Just heard a blip. <coughs> hey, Mike, can you hear us? Is he even there? You're legislative, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he 
is, but he's not making any noise. Yeah. He's unmuted, too. Hey, Mike, we can't hear you. I bet his microphone isn't connected properly. As you guess, we move on and circle back to what comes in. I agree. We'll circle back to legislative once we get through everyone else. All right. Membership director, John. Uh, nothing to add to my report. I just want to uh, do a call out to uh, Michelle and Karen Ann for putting together another great newsletter. Um, and I forgot to mention the focus on the convention is just fantastic. So please, when those come out, if you can help distribute those, that's a really high quality product. We, but it won't do any good if we don't put it in people's hands. And please, um, directors and affiliates, we really need your content. Um, if you could let us know um, what per report you'd like to put in as you're giving reports to the in the monthly meeting, um, that'll make it easy for you. And then we can we can take notes and, and go back to the re the minutes and put that in. But we need your content. It really matters. Is that Stapleton trying to come back there? Hey. Yep, oh, yep, he's coming back on. All right. Stapleton, you there? Not hearing anything. We'll move next into uh, communication. Stacy, that's you. I have nothing to add to the report. Maybe except I'm, I'm excited to see that there's still a lot of growth in the likes and and interests that are happening on Facebook, so. Excellent, good reassurance there, I like that. All right, and Secretary. Okay, we have a, <coughs> something called LPCO Open Business Google Group. And it was established many years ago, and uh, didn't get followed up on. But I've been getting requests from people to join that group, and then I route them over to our current Facebook page. But I can't close it out. They need the owner or somebody who has the password. Um, do we have any idea who no, does I, own that? We have a question. I think we're using that group, actually. Really? I think so. Because I looked and there were like no posts in there. Well, but do, doesn't it share the, the email from the board? I think so. I think that's what, I think that's what it's being used. Is that what that is? Uh, like Mr. Is. Chair? Uh, we have a motion from somebody in the audience that would require approval from the board. Does anybody object? There ain't no objections. Go ahead, Karen Ann. Um, the Google group is used to share the board emails, as someone had said, and the owner of it should be the communications director. Excellent, Karen Ann. Thank you. All right. Okay, I want to look at it. Of board? Yeah. That open board thing. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You, you and uh, Victoria. Communications yes. director is not. She probably should be correct. I, I can make communications director an owner. Victoria says she is. All right. All right. And then um, I still got a minute. It is that's an uh, option. Yeah. Right now we're paying, and Dave can confirm this, we're paying uh, $30 a month to cover email items that should be in the CRM with the. Um, Something twenty bucks and something nine bucks. Yes, I'm I'm covering those as in kind donations. That's on my report. Well, thank you for doing that. That's part of what I saw as I your report. But shouldn't CRM be handling that? Are they working toward implementing that? Or is that a forever expense? Um, that's something that the state party has to cover. Okay, so they're not going to uh, add that functionality. Anything else to add, Mr. Secretary? Nope. All right, cool. All right, next we're moving into standing committee reports. Get this back up again. All right, starting with technology. Yeah, so uh, over December there was a problem with the, the drive folder. Did you hear about this? No. Okay, so basically someone way back uh, created a shareable link for the drive folder, which means that it wasn't it was public facing, but um, it's under an obscure URL. Uh, we basically have to be careful not to share things from inside the the, the board folder uh, to outside individuals. 
So, like, so basically, you, there's a back door on the shared drive, <coughs> and that's easily accessible. Well, no, it's the front door. <laughs> um, anybody with a link could get in and see any of the files in there. Basically, no. uh, we turn it off uh, thanks to the help of, of Bill Arnett from Jetco, I believe. Uh, if you guys could not do that in the future, that'd be great. Because um, there's, I, I know there's a lot of. What? By share, you mean copy? Oh yeah. Just if you copy. If you have the URL, that, you can get the files. That opens this up. To yeah. I know. So, I I've, I've got a folder called Data Share, uh -huh. which I put um, usually spreadsheets and user co contracts or <coughs> excuse me. NDAs in there. Mm -hmm. Should we not be doing that? You put it in the in the board folder. Should be fine. I mean, all of that should be private. The the board. I don't know, but he's sharing it outside with our. As board. long as it's not inside of the board folder, that's fine. But it is. It's the drive is all board folder. No, 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 no. So there's a board folder that you guys have, like a folder that I think the state chair owns, that you put all of your board reports. Oh, you mean just the board minutes folder? Yeah. Well, okay. all of that stuff. I mean, there's a lot of different folders. Well, yeah, I know. Support. So, so if you just if you just go into the my drive and you create a file from there, I think what he's saying, it, as long that as that doesn't matter, yeah. As long as it's not inside the board directors folder. Yeah. Okay. Nobody, nobody should have access to the board directors. Folder. I mean, if we had a paid Google account, we could do something like team drives. <coughs> but I don't, and I would have more control over that. Yeah. All right, we are at time right now. Do you need more time, Mike? Yeah. All right, how much more do you need? Um, motion to extend the technology director's report by five minutes. Second. All right, we have a second. Do we have any objections? Hearing none, that will go through. Mike, continue. Yeah, so uh, I mean, if you create your own folder inside of, uh, at the root of your drive, then you can share with anyone you want. That's totally fine. Um, but because we don't have things like team drives that you would give with a pay plan, uh, there's no way that I can control what you guys do with that. Um, so basically anyone who has edit privileges on on the shared folder can share it with anyone, but you should. <laughs> so right now, Karen on Harlow's <coughs> reads the minutes, uh -huh. which are in the board minutes, and she's coming in from the outside. Does that mean that's open? Um, it might be shared with her email directly, and that's fine. Like it, It's fine as long as we don't create a shared link so that anyone with the URL can go see the files. So if you click on the share box and put in their email, that's OK. Yes. But copying the URL and send it to them, not OK. Um, on a secondary note, the, uh, I sent uh, a shared file to the uh, the confidential uh, board members uh, email. You guys should all be able to view it, um, and you should have gotten an invite for it in your Gmail. Uh, that is a list of all of the files that are publicly available through everybody's accounts on uh, on all of our drives. So if you guys could go through that and just make sure that there's nothing out there that of the organization. That'd be great. I mean, I could totally use some help because there's like 1,200 files on there, so. Cool. Uh, Wait, question for John. I think I, think I shared uh, <coughs> the location of the board reports to the outreach director. Is uh -huh. that, is that? Oh, that's within the organization. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. David? Uh, Victoria says that apparently she and Bill locked a lot of the files. I'm yeah, yeah, so okay. a lot of it's already been fixed. Got it. Cool. So it's been and, shut out. Yeah. And then she said, just remind everybody, don't put anything, uh, any personal information in there. Keep it all confidential. Right. Just remind them. Cool. That's me. Cool. Got anything else, Mike? No. All right. Thank you for everything you do. <coughs> all right. Next, we've got database and website. David? Uh, the only thing I'd like to add is to thank John for handling the board reports this month. Thank you, John. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. If nothing else, we're moving into ad hoc committee reports, if any, two minutes each. Uh, welcome committee is Mark Montoni on the call. Campaigns committee. I think we covered what we want to cover. So. Cool stuff. All right. <coughs> and issues committee startup. Do we still have Michael Stapleton? Mike, you still with us? He's still there. He's 
muted now. Hmm. Only he can unmute himself. you Mike. Fingers crossed. Ah. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and move on. Legislative committee. That's also Mike Stapleton. Moving on. All right. Convention committee. Two minutes. Um, so that's Angela. Is that still you? Yeah, I have nothing to add to the report. All right. Excellent. All right. Unfinished business. I see no unfinished business listed. All right. And with no unfinished business listed, we're moving into new business. First item on the new business, yay, get excited, is to vote on whether to support House Resolution 5492, known as Repeal the Draft. Um, I don't have anybody listed as speaking on this topic. Do we have anybody who's going to speak about that today? I um, move that we support, that we vote to support that resolution. All right, excellent. I think I've got an email from Bennett Rutledge, who's been a big proponent of this here. Uh, John, you had a question? Uh, yeah, uh, my question. What, what is the, uh, yeah, what's it all about? I don't know much about it. Is there a, uh, Language anywhere? Um, take a look here. Probably have to go online. All right, so that's a bill in the United States House of Representatives. Do we have a second for that motion? Um, I don't believe a motion's been made just yet. I do. Okay, a motion's been made. All right, so we do have a motion on the table to approve H.R. 5492 by signing our endorsement of the matter. Do we have a second? Second. All right, excellent. We've got a second. We'll go ahead and move into discussion. All right, did somebody have a question about that? John? Were you able to find the language? Is it short enough to read right now? A um, summary of it. Surprisingly, a very short summary from the U.S. House of Representatives. A surprisingly Before, short summary. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see here. Uh, yeah, Martin. I um, actually have it up here in front of me. Excellent. H.R. 5492 Repeal Selective Service Act, right? Okay. Yep. Um, their summary is a summary is in progress. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Good old fashioned government. <laughs> That's why it's so short. There you go. So, so basically, this has no teeth. Um, it's just introduced. Um, basically, what I've got here on the website is. To repeal the Military Selective Services Act, thereby terminate the registration requirements of such act and eliminate civilian local boards, civilian appeal boards, and similar local agencies of the selective service system. This sounds surprisingly very nice. John. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we postpone this to the next monthly meeting until we can find the language of the bill and read it so we know what we're voting on. All right, we have a motion to postpone consideration until we have a sec until we get time to read it and look at it at the next meeting. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, we have a second. All right, so we've got a motion to postpone this discussion until the next board meeting where we have time to actually read this proposal. All right, are there any opposed to taking this action? We have Is one somebody opposition. going to send the text around so we can actually do that? Um. Let's see here. The person who brought this forward to the board is Bennett Rutledge, so how we vote, I will ask him to do so. If he does, whether he does or not, I have no idea. Um, I would say, uh, speaking against um, the motion to the motion, is that um, very clear, simple, and it's toothless because it's a federal law, and they're just putting this out as a statement. I think we're safe going ahead just to prove it. Okay. All right. So we have opposition to postponing the discussion. All right. All those in favor of <coughs> postponing the discussion, please raise your hands. 
All right, all those in favor of not postponing the discussion, please raise your hands. All right, that looks like the majority, that fails. We're back to discussing approving the motion. All right, do we have any more discussion on approving this? Mike. Uh, I just sent the text of the resolution to everyone in the board, so you can read that. All right, perfect. Okay. Do we have any more discussion? I would just like to add on a personal note, as a United States military veteran who supports peace, I very much oppose the idea of selective service, and I like the idea that somebody in Congress, whether it's a meaningless gesture or otherwise, is saying selective service is wrong, let's get rid of it. All right, John. Mr. Chairman, it's been my experience that the titles of federal bills mean exactly the opposite of what they actually do. <laughs> very true. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> The text of it's also very short, though. Yeah, Probably has not been amended yet, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do we have any further discussion? Can I just make a quick comment from the audience? Uh, we have somebody from the audience who would like to speak. That would require approval from the board. Is there anybody from the board who objects? Hearing none, go right ahead, Adam. So, yeah, I'm, I, this is the first time I've heard of this, and it sounds awesome, but I, I actually respect your point of view on this. Sounds like this gentleman here sent out an email or something with the text on it, and it's a short enough where you guys can read it now. But uh, I don't, I, I don't think it's, it's responsible to, as he said, uh, 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 that to vote on something before you know what it is. Okay, so we've already postponed the, we've already voted against postponing the discussion. But thank you, Adam. Anyways, all right. So now we're back to whether or not we wish to approve the resolution. Is there any more discussion on the matter? John, last word. Since it is short, I move that we read the, read the bill before voting on it. Second. All right. So we have a new motion. The motion is to read the bill before we vote on it. And do you mean by read that now, John? And we have a yes. second. It's shorter, yeah. All right. All right. Is there any opposition to reading the bill now? All right. Hearing none, that passes. Um, parliamentary question for you, Mr. Secretary. Would it be appropriate to recess the meeting so we can read this and come back in five minutes? Or we can read it loud. Just read it out loud. Read it out loud. Yeah, yeah it's short. All right. It's an informal group. Do we have a volunteer to read it out loud? Go ahead, John. <clears throat> Section 1, repeal of the Military Selective Service Act. Uh, paragraph A, repeal. The Military Selective Service Act 50 U.S.C. 3801 is repealed. Paragraph B, transfers in connection with repeal, notwithstanding the provisio in Section 10A4 of the Military Selective Service Act, the Office of Selective Service Records shall not be reestablished upon the repeal of the Act. Not later than 180 days of this date of the enactment of this Act, the assets, contracts, property, and records held by the Selective ser Service System and the unexpected balances of any appropriations available to the Selective Service System shall be transferred to the Administrator of General Services upon the repeal of the Act. The Director of Office of Personnel Management shall assist officers and employees for the Selective Service System to transfer to other positions in the Executive Branch. Too bad we can't just let them go. Yeah. <laughs> Paragraph C, <clears throat> effect on existing sanctions. Notwithstanding any other provis provision of the law, a person may not be denied a right, privilege, benefit, or employment position under the federal law on the grounds that that person failed to present himself for and subject uh, to registration under Section 3 of the Military Selective Service Act before the act, repeal of that act by subsection A. Two, a state political sub subdivision of the state or a political authority of two or more states may not enact or enforce a law, regulation, or other provision having the force and effect to penalize or deny any privilege, benefit, a person who failed to present himself for and subject to registration under Section 3 of the Military Selective Service Act before the repeal of that act by subsection A. In this section, state means a state, the District of Columbia, and territory or possession of the United States. And three, failing to present oneself for and subject to registration under Section 3 of the Military Selective Service Act 
before the repeal of the act by subsection A, shall not be reason for any entity of the United States government to determine that person lacks good moral character or is unsuited for any privilege or benefit. And finally, conscientious, conscientious objectors, nothing contained in this act shall be construed to undermine or diminish the rights of conscientious objectors under the laws and regulations of the United States. The end. Excellent. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. John? Yeah, once the, uh, once the left completely disarms this country <coughs> and uh, we no longer have the, uh, uh, the gun behind each tree or whatever it was that the Japanese feared, uh, I wonder how the, the lack of a draft board is going to affect our readiness should the need arise suddenly, like World War III or something. I don't know. I'm a good question. You still have the voluntary military, which would be enforced, and these are people who want to be there. Speaking as, if I might, speaking as somebody who was in a voluntary military, the last person I would ever want next to me in the army is somebody who has absolutely no will to be there. Here, here. <coughs> All right. Do we have any more discussion on the matter? Good point. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, hearing no more discussion, we'll go ahead into voting on whether to support this resolution, this House bill here. All right. Do we have any objections to supporting this bill? Seeing none, that'll pass. And I'll go ahead and take it upon myself to contact Bennett Rutledge, let him know that the board has unanimously supported what he has brought forward to us. If he wishes to draft a statement of support, we will happily accept it. And if anybody else on the board would wish to do that, we'll accept that as well. I'll go ahead and reach out to Ben and Rutledge at the conclusion of this meeting. Cool. With that done, excellent. Let's see here. Convention committee, we have already talked about that. Um, collectible pins for Colorado conventions. Actually, actually, we haven't talked about that. Um, oh, yeah. My mistake, part. Angela. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I would just like a complete list of everything that we're going to be nominating and electing for at convention. Um, I have the four things that are currently on the agenda now, um, and just for scheduling, planning of scheduling, I just want to make sure that I have the rest of that list, um, you know, as soon as possible so I can start putting together a schedule. Uh, David? There are five or six board positions that are up also. Uh, yeah, yeah that's number two. Okay. Uh, Angela, would you be able to... Someone on the campaigns committee want to reach out to Angela about that? Yeah, I, I'll get in touch with you, Angela, and uh, we'll we'll discuss. Okay. I mean, without knowing who's willing to volunteer, a lot of these are going to be poor nominations. So I, I would recommend that you just set aside a, a certain number of hours for that. Um, but I'll get in touch with you, uh, keep you updated as to who we have uh, committed for that. Yeah, I'm not really sure that I need to know who's committed to actually, you know, running yet, but I need to know what we have to nominate and vote for. How many positions? I, I can send you uh, yeah. the list of how many positions we, <coughs> we have to vote on. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm done with that one. Cool, excellent. Josh? Uh, and Lexi? As far as the my qu question about making sure we're providing uh, our new nominees with the uh, being able to file a paperwork at convention. Um, my, I have a question: Who's who's going to be responsible for doing that? For making that paperwork available, coordinating with the nominees. I, I think we need to assign a person responsibility for that. <laughs> otherwise, it's going to slip through the cracks. Uh, Angela, is that something the convention committee has been working on? We've been talking about it. We, you know, we have notaries ready to go. We have a room ready with, you know, we'll have a photographer there. We don't quite know which forms need to be filled out. So if we could get the list of forms, we can make sure that we have enough copies and we'll have them everything available in the business room. David, um, there is a list of the requirements in the bylaws of Constitution, and I suspect the Secretary of State. Uh, the website will also have a list of forms that are required by them. There's only two forms required for the candidate, yeah. the affidavit and the statement of finances. Well, I thought the 
Yeah, there, there's, the only two. Forms. There's two other forms too, that need to be filed within four days. Those are the two I'm talking about. It should be pretty quick, Angela, but I'll, I'll stay in touch with you and make sure this goes smoothly. Great. Appreciate right. it. Yep. Cool. All right, moving on to the next item. We, we really didn't resolve it. Is, who's, who, who's responsible for this? I don't think we can resolve it at this time right now, can we? Is somebody yeah. taking responsibility oh, for it? Uh, I'll sit. Okay. All right. All right, cool. All right, moving on. Collectible pins for Colorado conventions. Angela, is that you too? Okay. Yes, this is me again. So I had this idea that, you know, collectible pins are, are kind of like a thing. People seem to like to collect these little, like, tchotchke things. And, like, you see them at Disneyland and stuff, and, you know, these, and they're relatively cheap to make. Um, I thought it'd be an interesting idea to start getting a pin together, uh, a collectible pin, off this year. Um, it would be roughly about $300 to get 100 and half pins made. We could sell them for, like, I don't know, seven. Um, it would be nice to have, uh, have it hit, uh, you know, the state board fund it, um, and then all the profits would go back to the state. Um, if we don't, if you guys don't want to fund it, I'm actually willing to myself. Is that a motion you're making right now, Angela? Mm -hmm. And then I guess I would like uh, to make a motion to approve, um, I'm going to say $350 for 100 pins for the state convention. All right, we have a motion on the floor to approve. Prof All right, we have a motion on the floor to approve $350 for the purposes of acquiring collectible pins to be sold at the convention. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a second, and we're gonna go right into discussion. Mike. So, uh, Angela, two questions. Um, are you anticipating we'll have 100 people at the convention? Uh, so far, not 100 people have signed up yet. Um, 100 people might be likely, um, but it's more because of the collectability of it. I'm not I'm, I'm thinking about holding on to the surplus. Um, if this pin thing is a hit, people want the old first pin. And then, and, and yeah, that's a good point. And then the other thing is, who's designing the pin? Uh, so I'm working with Amy Lundy to design oh, yeah. it. Um, she's done a lot of our graphics for yeah. the convention website already. She, she's really good. Uh, do we have any more discussion? David. Just a question, and this would be a fundraiser for the state board, or the state parks. Is that correct? Yes. Awesome. Right. Any more discussion? John? Just a question, what is the collectible pin? Is it like a metal? Yeah, <coughs> a metal en pin? Enameled metal, yeah, okay. not that big. Nobody's wearing it. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Any other questions or discussion? Mike. I'd encourage people to support this. I've seen people go fanatic over collecting these pins, Disney World, balloon things, etc. So um, it could, could, could work out. Something to try. All right, cool. Any more discussion or questions? David. Um, I would like to recommend to the convention committee that you print on the name badges the districts of each of the delegates, the congressional district, the house district, and the senate district. This way, people who volunteer from the floor will know what district they're actually running in. Right. We've, had, we've lost a couple of candidates in prior years because people got their district wrong. So this is something I'd strongly recommend. I, I agree with that. I would also, um, I was planning on having uh, my little surface there specifically to look up the Find My District website for people too. So if anyone registers day of, that we could do that right there for them on the spot. Okay. Awesome. All right, excellent. All right, if there's no more discussions or questions, I'd like to go ahead and move into voting to approve this $350 in the motion. Is there anybody who objects? Seeing no objections, that passes. <coughs> Woohoo! Excellent. All right. We've got three more items to go, people. All right. Franklin Barbecue Austin fundraising idea. Who is that? This is me again. All right. Go ahead, Angela. So there's a very detailed description of this in my fundraising director's report. Franklin Barbecue in Austin is a world-famous barbecue joint. They open up at 11 in the morning, and they go until they run out of food 
which is usually about two or three. The line for this place starts forming around six in the morning. Um, so it's really hard to get to. You can bypass this if you order catering from them. Um, so my idea is for the national convention is to get a certain amount of meat. You have to buy at least five catering be effective. Serve it out of one of our rooms, um, pounds of meat. Karen Ann Harlos has reached out to me directly. She actually is um, offering up the use of her hospital in hospitality suite if we want to run it out of there. And so the idea is we buy a certain amount of catering um, and then sell plates at conventions. So for people who aren't going to be doing the lunch sessions, this would be an opportunity to network and hang out and eat barbecue um, while other people are, you know, having their lunch speaker. So the reason why I'm bringing it now is because it's going to need pretty significant board support since my successor will be taking over the site. Um, so I want to know how much, you know, of, of the brush to clear on this, um, Ian, because I think it could be really fun. Ah, you say successor, Angela. Are you implying that we won't be yeah. seeing you in the future? You'll see me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So are you making a request for funds right now, Angela? I am not. I just want to put the idea out there to get people thinking about it. Um, you know that that this is something that I have in mind, and, and you know we can take this offline and discuss any issues that we see with it. But I did clear it with the hotel, so I called the hotel, and it's okay with the outside food. Um, so, so that part is is good. Um, All right, cool. Sounds good. Something to chew on, everybody. And we've gotten an Angela's report, so absolutely make some lively discussion in the emails. All right, moving on. Continuity binders. Uh, David, was that something you wanted to talk about? Um, yes, I would, <coughs> I would like to hear an update from each of the board members on the, on the progress of the continuity binders. All right, cool. All right, chair is not here. Vice chair probably have to make a couple of updates. I just had a placeholder going. I think there's a few more things I need to add. All right. Um, Treasurer. Uh, the only part of my uh, uh, continuity binder that I'm actually working on is the, the, the details of what I'm doing. I intend to eventually have a hard copy <laughs> continuity binder like we're doing in El Paso County. keep screwing up and learning things. So it's sort of a, you know, it's, it's constantly changing as far as the, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff for me. And then I'm just, it, it's pretty good. I, I can hand it to somebody and they, they probably get by now. Cool. Uh, okay. All right. uh, fundraising. So the majority of my continuity binder is gonna consist of the convention um, the convention planning stuff. And that already exists uh, with Michelle. Um, she has it in, in a certain form. Um, I don't have it trans translated uh, you know, into my folder yet. And I'm just waiting on it because I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Oh, um, but everything else that I have done that I feel like I'm not having you know, to reinvent something that already exists is completed. Cool. All right, campaigns. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, David, I haven't, I haven't worked on it, so. I'll be working on that this month. Outreach. I'm new, but I can put that together pretty easily. Because yeah. I've got templates from hours. <laughs> did, didn't you get one when you stepped in the office? Uh, I absolutely <laughs> did not <laughs> get one when I stepped in. Yeah. There you go. Just make the continuity binder you wish you had. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. Um, affiliates, you are obviously not Steve. No, no. <laughs> I don't know where he is with it. Right. Um, legislative, do we have Stapleton back yet? <laughs> keeps on muting himself, but the audience is not coming through. <laughs> <laughs> it was a heck of a good party. <laughs> All right. Membership? Uh, mine is done and posted, obviously. Updating nice. it on a continual basis. Cool. Uh, do we still have communication? Stacy? I am here. I, I am editing what my predecessor has entered, things that, that I've run across that I think that would be beneficial moving forward. Beautiful. And secretary? Mine's done, but not posted. Okay. All right. I have a question. All right. Where, do, and John. where do continuity binders get posted? 
All right, so where I've gotten, where I've asked everybody to put them for now is, let me get that pulled up right here. If you go under the Board of Directors Share Drive and you click Board Vice Chair, there's a folder in there for continuity binders. Okay, so it's all going in your Vice Chair folder? Yep, because for the bylaws, that is under my jurisdiction. It will be. I yep. see it. All right, excellent. All right, and last but not least, um, John. Yeah, I, uh, I passed off these to most everybody. It's kind of, it's like a table of contents for the Del Paso City. I find that uh, well, some of it you don't use all the time. Like a copy of like the state bylaws in the county, we have our bylaws and the state bylaws and that sort of thing. Once in a while, you look it up, but you should have you know your job description and your and what, all the details of what you do in your continuity binder. The point being, I mean, I hope the purpose of a continuity binder is continuity, which means passing this stuff to a new a new person that it speeds up their uh, ability to get it online. Um, something I didn't mention here that I just re reminded myself when I looked at it, they, they've stuck a, a thing in the front of this that has, you write in at the time you give it over, the passwords and all that kind of stuff so that you, know, you hit the deck run and this is the whole point of the continuity line like the idea of something to think about if you're stumped on how you want to set up your continuity binder, what you want to put in it. I like the idea. All right. Any other discussion or new business? All right. Hearing none, I motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. Are there any objections? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Have a good night, everybody. All right.